<sighs> Hello and welcome to another video. It's been a long time. <laughs> Another video, like it's yeah. yesterday that we released. Hey, look, it's been a long time, but we didn't want to finish the year without um, putting out or at least wishing you a Merry Christmas. I hope your Christmas has been going very well and signing off in a way, you know. So keeping it light, keeping it uh, fun, hopefully. We're going to do <laughs> stuff Dutch people like. Yes. Welcome to our channel. Me, you, us. Yes, me plus you is us. My name is Kwame. I'm Elaine. She's managed to let me mention the names as best as I can all yes. the time. So we're starting a new series called Stuff Dutch People Like, based on this book that a good friend gifted to Kwame. When, uh, a few years ago. When we started dating. Yeah, whoa, whoa. That's yes. like not a few years, it's a long time. And it's been on our bookshelf here behind us for the past years. And then I was like, Ah, should we revisit the stuff that people like? Yeah. It's actually based on a blog that was started in 2011. The book was published in 2013. So we're going to see if this is still up to date and what our experiences are in the Netherlands yeah. as a dutch Ghanaian couple, Ghanaian yeah. dutch couple. Yeah. So it's a list of how many things. Let me see. Maybe 100. No, 60 things that Dutch people, people like. like. So if we do uh, five or ten, then we have a lot of episodes let's to cover. Let's see. Where are we going? Yeah. All right. Let's dive right in. Number one, bicycles. If that wasn't number one, I <laughs> swear I'd be like confused because <laughs> Netherlands is the one country in the world everybody or other countries praise for their transport system, especially with bicycles. Yes. Did you know there are more bicycles than people in the Netherlands? Yes. Like people on average earn like 1.5 bike or something, like yeah, more yeah, than one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The human to bicycle ratio is like one is to two at least, or one is to 1.5. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot. That's a lot. Yes. Especially when you count kids and everybody. This is like the whole population. It's yes. not just like, you know, it's a adults. Lot. It's a lot. But how, how did it come about? Like, you know, like, wh why? Why is it because you guys I, are hmm. on flat land? I don't land? know how. Yeah, maybe that started. It's flat land, so it's easy to cycle. Yeah. And then, well, I think it's interesting that no matter the weather, you'll see people on the bike. Rain, sunshine, snow. Have heavy you wind. Heavy <laughs> wind. Have you seen people trying to cycle in the snow? It's really something. Like, people are trying. Yeah, I don't think I've seen people cycle in the snow. No. Even though I've spent um, at least one uh, Christmas or one December in the Netherlands, I don't think I've seen people actively trying to cycle in the snow. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I mean, cycling is, is one of the things that Dutch people absolutely... And it doesn't, like, it doesn't even have... You see somebody, the age limit, like very old. Yeah. You, know? you cycle until you are in your grave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of. Probably take the bicycle with you. I think well. what also why we like the bicycle so much is that it's just like you get on the bike and you go. Like it's that sense of freedom. Yeah. And I mean, the the cities have been also designed for it. Like there are bicycles la bicycle lanes. Bicycle traffic lights. Bicycle There's rules. even an award for Bicycle City of the Year, which my hometown, Houghton, has won several times. <laughs> yes, I yes. grew up in the bicycle city of the Netherlands. Yes. Can you imagine? We cycled everywhere. Bicycle, uh, yeah. There were um, like literally in ha in Houten, like there are places where the cars don't come at all. That's yeah. why it's so quiet and yeah, right. yeah. You can actually do everything in almost everything in Houten with bicycle. Yeah, even yeah. better than walking. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's better accessible. You will be there in like five minutes. Everything is like five minutes away. Zoof there, zoof there, zoof there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever been run over by a bike? Because that's what a lot of people complain about in Netherlands. The tourists. That's what a, yes, that's what a lot of tourists complain about. Oh, sorry, that's, you're not a tourist. No. <laughs> mm. But that's because, uh, I mean, the average person doesn't have such strict cycling rules in their city or wherever they're coming from. Yeah. And bicycle lanes and even having like the, the, the ones going and the ones coming walking on the right or cycling on the right side or left side, mm. traffic lights and everything. The average person is walking on the streets and thinking, oh, I'm on the sidewalk. Mm. And then next thing you know, somebody's... Ding, 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 
thing and you're like, oh. And they cycle with so much passion. I don't get it. Like, like yeah. so much passion. Can y'all just chill? Yeah. And people go fast. Very fast. That's one thing I don't get because you cycle fast, then you sweat in your clothes, then you come to work or wherever you are going and you're sweating. I really dislike that about the bicycle. Because sometimes you think like, oh, the weather is okay, I, I don't need to. like, And then the wind is like, and yeah. you're literally soaked when you get there. But how would you rate your own cycling skills, like in the Netherlands? My cycling skills in the Netherlands, One I think, to ten. I'll give it a four or five. Okay, so you're getting there. Yeah, it's very low. I mean, yes. I'm not even trying to. Okay. The, 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 the. I'm most impressed that, uh, so in at least how I was taught cycling, is that a sentence? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, is that you raise your arm if you want to go left. All right. All right. And sometimes Kwame does it very like, <laughs> very stern, like, I'm going, people, I'm going. Which is very funny. <laughs> I'll try to adapt So to I think I will give you a six. I see people try to, I mean, see people doing that. And it's very serious business, guy to show where you're going. Yeah. yeah. But you're trying. Yeah. I think you're trying. All right, let's go to the second one. This one will be very familiar to you. Gezellig. Oh. Can you explain to the people at home what gezellig means? Oh, I think we've done it several times. I'm sure by now they know what uh, gezellig means. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's a word that doesn't have a literal translation in English. It's just um, cozy. It's just warm. Mm. It's nice. It's uh, comfortable. Um, but what do you use it to describe things? Like what? It's, it's moments. It's mm. atmosphere. Mm. moments and atmosphere so if you're chilling with your friends uh, maybe having popcorn and watching a movie or having food you've cooked together and just talking and it, it's gezellig mm -hmm. amongst you then yeah that's yeah and it's something that i think culturally dutch people crave a lot because um i think they make time for gezellig moments yeah quality time yeah they make time for it because if it's not work and it's not maybe cycling <laughs> or getting to a place, <laughs> yeah. then it, it's, it's, you know, Try to make something cozy among yeah. themselves. So it's. Okay. it's let let me read what the book has to say or the blog has to say about it. Spend any time in the Netherlands and you will quickly learn that Dutch people love this perplexing, guttural sounding word. Yeah. The Dutch are fiercely proud of this word and everything it represents. Gezelligheid is the modern day religion of the Dutch. Yeah. They love it, they need it, and above all, they respect it. Yes. <laughs> so if, if, if you make a moment less gezellig, you're not the fun person at the party or at yeah. the place. So yeah. remember that. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Yeah. I wonder if you've tasted this one. Hagelslag. Hagelslag. No. It's a chocolate sprinkles on the bread. Oh, I've seen it. Um, I have tasted it. Not my favorite. Um, it's, it's not something I would... Uh, it's also a, a kind of uh, one of the snacks for... It's not a snack, though. It's a meal. It's a snack. No, it's a meal. Bread. Yes. Butter. And... Hagelslag. Chocolate sprinkles. So, snack. as you know, to Kwame's... Discuss. We eat a lot of bread. <laughs> we eat bread like sandwiches for lunch all the time. We eat bread in the morning. We can even eat it for dinner if you're like my dad. So <laughs> bread, 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 bread. And then we have this, well, we just say tradition. We have this product, which is chocolate sprinkles. So you have a preferably white bread, like fresh white bread from the bakery, butter on top, and then you sprinkle the chocolate sprinkles. And it's like, mm. and people eat it a lot. I have some numbers. Dutch people eat over 14 million kilos of hagelslag every year. This was in 2013. Can you imagine? 14 million kilos. Yes. That's a lot. Over 750,000 slices of bread with hagelslag on top every day. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Every day. Every day. 750,000 slices of bread. Okay, I understand. I thought it was like a yes. year. And um, for the sense. historic historics, history, history people among us. Hagelslag was invented by the Dutch company Vent in 1936. Legend has it that the owner got the idea from letters from a five-year-old boy asking for a chocolate bread topping. 
So. Makes sense. Makes sense. Me, it's a snack. It's one of those snacks you take to a picnic for some of the ghazalakh moments in the park. No, it's like, for me, you can eat it any time of the day. And you know which, well, which one I really like? Bread, peanut butter, hagelslag. You have the nuttiness of the peanut butter. And, the <laughs> and then the chocolate for the sweet aftertaste. Wow. You enjoy. No, 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 no. I have another fun fact. In a recent study in 2013... <laughs> Six percent of respondents admitted to eating hagelslag directly <laughs> from the pack. <laughs> I don't do that, but I do that with uh, Nutella. So everybody has its own okay, own um, what do you say fetish? <laughs> Is it a fetish? No, your own weird oh, cravings weird and weird uh, food combos. Okay, let's go to the next one. This one, Which one is this? you're very familiar with Dutch directness. Oh, this is the four. Yes, number four. Dutch directness, yes. Should I read what the book says? Then mm. you respond. Yeah. I want to hear your experience. You've heard the rumors, the stereotypes, and all the cliches, and we are here to tell you that the majority of the gossip, they are, in fact, all absolutely true. <laughs> Dutch people are direct. Direct to the point of shocking at times. Direct to the point of gasp. <gasps> and direct to the point of, what the fuck did he just say to me? Bleep. <laughs> if you plan on spending <laughs> any time in the Netherlands, you had better get used to it and fast. Well, what do you have to say to that? Married to a Dutch woman. Yeah, I, I, I Being am. Being in the Netherlands for fine some time to time. I am quite direct myself. Mm. So I found that um, not very. Uh, I wasn't thrown off by it, is what I'm trying to say. I wasn't mm. thrown off by it. Except culturally, some of the questions are like. Uh, yeah, that every person would not ask you that or say that to you. Mm. Yeah. Can you remember something, an example? Not particularly. Okay. But it was more of, uh, I'll put it as it ignorant curiosity, like mm -hmm. innocent curiosity or ignorant, innocent ignorance curiosity mm -hmm. in a way that they ask something that, oh, so why do you do this? Or why does this happen? Or is it true that this happens? Or, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, Yeah. I've had that. I'm not gonna. I'm not, I can't be specific, but those are the moments which I wonder. Well, the average person will not ask that. But in terms of uh, conversation or uh, expressing oneself and saying it as mm -hmm. it is, that doesn't yeah. throw me off because I'm. I. I think I'm quite direct in a way as well. Yeah. Yeah. But what I have realized <laughs> is that. Uh. Um, What's coming? For uncomfortable directness or things that are true or you observe, Dutch people are direct, but when you are direct to them as well, sometimes it throws them off. Mm. Yeah, that's what I've realized um, in some instances. It throws them off. They, 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 you, you, you can tell um, their face go red. Mm. that, oh, wow, I didn't expect you to say that or I didn't expect that you had observed this about me and you would say it as is like that. Oh, you made people shy. Is it shy? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Yeah, but yeah, so they, 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 they give, they dish out directness, but they are thrown off by getting dished the same level mm. of directness. Okay. Yeah. I think for me, I, it's kind of the stereotype of Dutch people being direct. I think we are direct. However, some people also kind of misuse it and use that l like label rude, of directness. To yes. be rude and intrusive. To be very rude and say like, no, like I, I no disrespect, but, and then they say something very disrespectful, disrespectful. And then it's like, yeah, we Dutch, we are very direct. And like, there's direct, but there's also still... Tact. Yes. You know, in and a way, like you have to be circumspect about what you're saying and, and yes. think about how it will affect the other person. I don't think you should use it as an excuse to just be blunt all the time and say what you think. Yeah. Because you can still hurt people. Yeah. And yeah, I don't hide behind the stereotype. You know, check yourself to all my fellow Dutchies. <laughs> okay, next one. <sighs> Five. Five. Battling water. Why do you think that is in the book? Because uh, the the whole of Netherlands actually even means below uh, sea level. Yeah. Yeah. So in so. the I I don't okay. So we had a big flood in 1953, 
and then they came up with like the waterworks and then there's also in the middle of the Netherlands uh, the Flevoland which used to be sea and then people were able to claim. dry it claim it from the water yeah. so that is also something that is unique to the Netherlands but if with the climate change that is currently happening uh, if the sea level will rise a lot the Netherlands will definitely be like half flooded if we don't do anything but I actually watched some documentaries and I do admire the engineering it's like it's like yeah uh, there's lots of engineering yeah life put them there and I mean hum humans evolve and they evolved into people that yeah. managed to live with yeah. and in the water because yeah. even Dutch engineers are hired or serve as consultants to other places yeah. which want to build bridges and other things that require or um, adapting to living yeah. around water. So it's just something yeah. admirable. Yeah. yeah, I think it's pretty cool. And, and everywhere you go, almost every city, canals. And yeah. yeah, we really live have with water. Have yeah. used the water, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's true. Okay, let's go to the next one. So we're going 10. Yes, we're going to number six now. All right. Three. Kisses. I think that was four. Mine is one. <laughs> yeah. Three kisses. Three kisses. So... It confuses me a lot. Yes. So when you enter a room... Well, it depends on the setting. But let's say a social thing. You're going to a birthday. You will greet people with three kisses. It got a bit less because of COVID, because again, we don't do that. Physical and too much yes. proximity. But it's tricky. With it's who, which people do you give a hand? Which people do you do the kisses? Some Google people hug. Face. Some people don't kiss. Okay. For me, the confusion is also... So I do this. I don't touch the yeah, person's yeah, cheek. You, so you air kiss. Because I don't know where you've been. No. <laughs> <laughs> you do air kissing like you kiss like you know. and i get comments about that like oh you're the you're one of them that doesn't kiss but i don't want to feel your lips on my cheek man yeah because sometimes it goes wrong and with people when you're coming away to do the next and then one they're and like your, your mouth and then brush. yeah <laughs> yeah it's, and and i think that three is one too many man i mean it's one two Hey, done. But I, I one, don't mind two, with like three, you're going again. I'm like, what is going on? I think with family, I don't mind as much. Like uncles and aunts, do, like I feel that. But for example, acquaintances. I hate to be in the office where, on my birthday because people want to kiss three times. Oh, like, ah, you're my. Are you always in Ghana? Not in Ghana, but before. Oh yeah. It is to me, it's a lot. Or and you're when doing that to almost everybody who is pleasant to you or with you. Yes. And that's a lot of, that's a lot yes. of three kisses. And also when, like, uh, when you are coming to the office in the new year, then people also do happy new year. And then suddenly you're kissing with people you never want to like, <laughs> be close to. Yeah, sorry. So it's a bit, um, yeah. Much. For me, it's a lot. Yeah. But... But I think it's less now. I don't know how many times you've experienced it now. Oh, having the experiences in a very long time. I yeah. think it was in the beginning. I think our first visit, yeah. um, I had it with your mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's more the older generation as yeah. well. But it's also interesting that in the Netherlands, when you enter a, a birthday party and there's like a people there. So it, most of the times a birthday party in the Netherlands, you're all sitting in a circle <laughs> and yeah. eat, eating cake and talking. And then when you enter that's, new, that's you have a, to go around. That's a party. Yeah. You have to go around and kiss everybody. So before, I really hate that. Because it puts you literally on the spot like, what the hell, I just arrived now. I have to go around like. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's too much. Anyway, next one. Yeah. Orange. The color orange. What does it mean to us? Um. To Dutch people. I don't Everywhere. Know. Is it the king? Yes. So, our Aranya? royal house is called from Aranya, orange. Yeah, Aranya. Yes. See, I got it. <laughs> yes, because our first king, Willem van Oranje. Yeah. And uh, we made the cars orange, in case you didn't know. They used to be purple. Yes, yes. Dutch people but actually. But we Dutchies. 
create this orange, orange, orange carrots. Whoop, orange. <laughs> You're excited. Carrots. I'm about about orange. orange. <laughs> yes. And whenever we have our king's birthday, Koningsdag, we all dress up in orange. We put flags on our cheeks. Faces, yeah. <gasps> put uh, hats. Hats. Drink a lot of beer. Drink a lot of beer. Shout. Buy secondhand stuff in town. For more discounts. <laughs> discount, discount, discount. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really gets crazy. And especially also when, of course, the national football team plays. You grab your orange gear and or you run, go. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's like that. The Dutch turret is orange. Yes. And she's wearing a shade of brown orange. This is red. No. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> okay, next Acht. one. Not owning curtains. Yeah, that's no. one of the things I found fascinating in, during my first visit. And I was like, whoa, like nobody is closing up their windows. And, and uh, some of the apartments or some of the homes are quite low in terms of their window. And then you're passing in front of somebody's house and you literally see everything. Mm -hmm. Even at night. Sometimes, I mean, before they, you know, mm -hmm. some people, depending on where they are and how busy it is, might uh, buy some curtains. But they only use it, or blinds, but they only use it when they're going to sleep or something. Mm -hmm. And then in the morning, it's up again. I found that very fascinating that you could walk not in, you're out, but you could walk in on people having their dinner and having like a moment yeah. in their home. And like a stretch of a street, you, you could just be seeing people having their family yes, times. Yes. It's just open it's like that. All right, let me read what the book has to say. Dutch poop, Dutch poop. <laughs> Cut that out, Dutch poop. <laughs> I'm not cutting now. Just go. Dutch people like living a curtainless existence, thereby showing the world they have nothing to hide. Take a leisurely stroll down any Dutch street, and you are sure to notice one startling similarity: a persistent lack of drawn curtains and hands. No personal privacy. Nope. <laughs> we do have to admit that our voyeuristic tendency are heartily fulfilled in Amsterdam. She so wants to know about the roots. Of why people think we don't have curtains. Yeah, 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 okay. Much has been discussed about this matter. The common consensus is that it stems from the Dutch people's Calvinistic roots. Because allowing passerby a full view of your living quarters show you have nothing to hide. Our theory on the matter is slightly different. The answer is most, much more simplistic and can be summed up in five letters. Light. Yeah, Dutch okay. people love the sun. And quite frankly, many of their ground floor and basement apartments are nothing more than dark, somber dungeons. So you have to let in light. Yes. Great. But do you notice this habit when we live together? Do you notice that? You open stuff a lot. I like a lot Lights. of daylight. Yeah. Yes. You, While you, you're in you, Ghana. You dislike, you actually dislike the Ghanaian style architecture in terms of windows and how... I love daylight, but here yeah. it makes sense to keep the sun out because the heat comes in. Yeah. But for me, like, especially in our office, people, so I don't have daylight in my office. I'm in the middle of a hallway. Help, help, help. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but other people have uh, an office with a window and then I come into their office and their, their um, uh, blinds. Shit, blinds are always closed and I'm like, why are you doing are you that? that to yourself? So. Open the window. Look outside. The world is one big playground. Why are you not looking at it? Anyway, so uh, shout out to work. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> no, but I think it's weird that people here. Ha no, not weird. I think it's weird that you would block out the windows fully. Yeah. Because for me, I would love, I love to see the day pass by. So I also love our house for that. There's a lot of daylight. I need that. Otherwise, I get a bit like som somber. Like yeah. yeah. Anyway, next one. Negen. Nine. Yeah. Negen. Did you hear that, guys? He said nine in Dutch. Mm. Tulips. Yes, I think that's also one of the things that is representative of, uh, apart from the color orange, bicycles, the flower. I think you're the the world's largest producer of tulips. 
I don't or know about that. Maybe. It's a symbol of the Netherlands, that's for sure. However, it's actually not originating from the Netherlands. Where I do you think, think it, it comes from? I don't know. Originally, it is owed to the Ottoman Empire, so the Turkish. Right. And then, by way of trade, we got our hands on it, of course. And later, a Flemish botanist discovered that the unusual flower thrived in the harsh climate of the lowlands. And that's it. Yeah. You have your tulips. Yeah, you have this uh, poo, I don't know what's it called, people... The name escaped me, but you have this whole um, tulip park in the Netherlands. We've never been... I, don't, I didn't think you would be interested. No, not really. Maybe <laughs> when one day we were really bored. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, so tulips. It's the symbol of the Netherlands. We just took it from the Turkish and the Flemish, and then we ran I mean, with it. The world it. is taking a lot of things, uh, some fruits and whatever, that from different places. So everybody's uh, hmm. taking. Teen? Okay. Ten. Teen. Birthday congratulations. Yes. One of the things that's a, one of my culture shocks, pleasant culture shocks, I would say. Mm. is that when it's your birthday, people congratulate your family and your loved ones. Congratulations on the birthday of this person. Yes. Is there any reason why you all do that? I think it's cute. So whenever it's Kwame's birthday, then people will congratulate me with my husband. He's like, congratulations! On your husband's birthday. Yes. What's, the, what's, the, what's their history? What's the reason behind it? Is I think it, it's more like a communal thing. Let me see. No, they don't say it. Right. But, uh, yeah, people get... So, they say, what exactly are you congratulating people for? Yeah. <laughs> congratulations on being born. Congratulations on surviving another year. Yeah. The whole thing is beyond confusing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It is. Exactly. But, yeah, nonetheless, it's a uh, culture. Okay. Uh, of the Dutch they do have a good uh, nav how to navigate a Dutch birthday. Do you want to hear it? Yeah. Let's I'll see hear if it. you I can really relate. Hear it, yeah. One, congratulate the person whose birthday it is. Mm -hmm. So whenever you enter the room, you have to search for the person that this is actually... The birthday yes. and congratulate them? This sounds simple, but you will need to use the Dutch word. word. Do you know which word? Gefeliciteerd. <laughs> Almost. Gefeliciteerd. Gefeliciteerd. So you have to start practicing that. Then okay. second, make your way around the circle of seated guests that was... What I was talking about, and congratulate everyone who is close to the person whose birthday it is. This means congratulating their mother, father, wife, husband, oma, opa, the cat, the dog, you name it. Three, dole out three kisses when appropriate. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Time 1600. Yeah, I then think, I think I yeah, avoid, avoid Dutch birthdays. Eat one piece of cake and be merry. I the have to say part, this the last part and the first part. You can do those two. Fuck the rest. Yeah, I, I think <laughs> the places with our where we go with our friends, we don't really sit in circles anymore, right? Mm -hmm. So we don't. First time though, we did. First time in Netherlands. The first uh, first visit. This uh, I don't know. It's a friend or acquaintance, singer, lady of yours, whose birthday we were sitting in a circle. Maybe that wasn't the fun party. No. <laughs> No, it, it wasn't, wasn't a circle circle. I think we were out around the fire. Yeah, but it wasn't a circle. That's why it was. Yes, okay. But normally they mean like in a living room, you just have a, a chairs in a circle and then everybody starts sitting down. Well, it's, it's, a circle. it's more for the older generation. Anyway. Okay, this was our first 10. How yeah. do you feel? Relieved? Do you feel acknowledged? Do you feel seen? Do you feel like, yeah. I should be asking you that. In the Netherlands. I mean, they're pretty, yeah, they're things that... Not important to us, but... Oh, oh, if you're asking if I do recognize these things, yes. Yes. Every one of those things, yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So curious to... What? <laughs> get to the next batch. Yes. And see what you make of it. But that would be in the new year? In the new year. Because by the time you watch this video, I think it might be Christmas or... Boxing Day or... I'm not sure when I'm releasing it. But it is this year <laughs> and it's our last video for the year. So, so we say happy new year. <laughs> you did four again. Oh. 
That is weird with the microphone. I'm mm. better. Mm. Mm. But do you kiss? Do you touch the person's cheek? No. No, you also do cheek on cheek. Yes, and then air kiss. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's it for this final episode, episode for the year. And Congratulations on this episode. Oh no, it's not the birthday of the episode. <laughs> Never mind. And cut to black.